Hello, everybody. Here we are for another amazing event. This time is going to be really, really fun. I have prepared everything for this event. Boom. This one's, this one's. We are going to be learning about visual thinking, about drawing, about this in the context of business and professional work. You know why all these explainer videos work? Because of this, because we express each other in a visual matter that connects to people. From people to people, drawings are going back to basics, no words needed. And for that, we have a really, really nice expert that is going to show us the way. You know, for everybody who's new, uh, welcome. We host events every single week on Mondays and Thursdays. Today, we have the events that are like in total one hour that can be between a like workshop, a live webinar, an expert demo. This one today is a fusion between a webinar, like a presentation, but it's really hands on. So I suggest pen, paper and colors, please bring it up. And uh, on Mondays, we have something called Coffee Break with Maria. So I'm interviewing one of our experts for those who are completely new and don't know anything about seven days to go where this place where entrepreneurs and experts come together and we work in sprints of seven days that's why we have this name and uh, for the expert pool we have this community really tight community of over 40 experts based around the world we cover like 10 different languages actually today our expert is from, from india and uh, he's based in the netherlands i'm also normally based in the netherlands but now I'm saying hi from Colombia, Bogota, Colombia. So let's welcome our expert, Pius. Do I say your name correctly? <laughs> hi. Yeah, can I say it correctly? I would say Pius. Sure, sure. There's an unwanted E in between, but then I like that E. But the name is Piyush. Okay, so that's his name. <laughs> So we are working together for a long time and we have done a lot of offline events in Amsterdam, you know, and right now that, yeah, since April that we launched our online uh, uh, yeah, calendar event, it's going really great and it's really good to also be creative and innovate within this format, you know, so that's why we bring relevant topics that are not only important in times of Corona crisis, but also in times of quarantine and remote work and a lot of screen and text and everything. So just to refresh <laughs> your day-to-day -day lives, we're bringing this insightful uh, yeah, content. So for all those who are SVP, via even Bright Meetup, all our channels, welcome for people who hasn't RSVP, just uh, give us or share your emails because we're going to be sending all the slides and uh, the copy of this video and the next steps, of course, so you can stick around on, around this relevant topic. So, P.S., some a little introduction about yourself and we're good to go. Okay, Good cool. to draw. <laughs> Thanks, Maria, for introducing me. I always love your energy and the way you start. It all it increases my energy level. I'm all, I am most of the time on a high note, but then when I see you and when I see you speaking, I am already on a higher note than what I'm usually at. Too much coffee. So thank yeah. you again for introducing me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So when Colombia and uh, India meets, then uh, there's a volcano that erupts. Huh? Uh, I mean, <laughs> in the presentations. So, P.S., I'm going to grab my papers and I see you soon. Uh, I know it's going to be amazing. So, people, why you should stay with us? For those who are new and they don't know anything about this event, let's give a little recap of what we're going to cover today so we can then get started. What is it about, P.S.? What are we going to learn today? Yeah, so when today we we're learning about visual thinking and how visual thinking can be used in uh, in the business. And I'll be telling you all the aspects of visual thinking, um, which can be used in businesses, in various aspects of businesses. And at the end of the workshop, we will spend around 15 to 20 minutes to actually draw. But before that, I'll clarify what are the different aspects so that you exactly know what you are doing. Perfect. So yeah. by the end of this, because it's a workshop and we're going to draw, I invite everybody to post their drawings through comments so we can see what we did together. Yeah? Yes, yes, <laughs> cool. Exactly. Okay, success. I'm going to be here drawing. Nice content, Pius. Go. Cool. So, uh, yeah, here's the slide. And can you see my slide? Um, can you see my slide clearly, uh, Maria? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I think my slides are visible, right? So, okay, uh, we will start and today we'll be learning about visual storytelling and energizers for online whiteboards. So this is the topic and we will see exactly what goes on. 
a quick introduction about myself. My name is Piyush and I am a visual storytelling coach and an online marketer. And I work with Seven Days to Go as a as a partner and we help clients with uh, their online campaigns and visual storytelling in business. So let's see what we will do today. Today's scope of the webinar is we will have a quick introduction, which we already had. Now we will learn about what, why, and how of visual thinking. And then we will also have some drawings and then question and answers. So observe this scope of the work. This is already a visual and I'll tell you in detail how I drew it and how you can draw it. So I hope you are ready. So let's quickly jump to the why, what, and how of uh, visual thinking. First, we will check what. So what are the usage of uh, visual, visual thinking? So the first one is visual facilitation. Don't mind the, the fonts here in the slides because it, it was a last minute tweak and some fonts were missing. So don't worry, I'll be repeating the words. So the first one is visual facilitation. Now, what is visual facilitation? Visual facilitation is when you are in a meeting, you are in a meeting or you are giving training and then you are using any, any visual, um, uh, you visual models to work on. Like for example, uh, the first one which you can see on your screen is the, the mood barometer, which means um, when you start the meetings, then you can call up people and ask how they, how is their mood. So in many a times you just put it in an Excel sheet or, you know, in a, in a boring format, but a cool method would be to visualize this. We'll see more examples of this. Let me quickly check my WhatsApp once. So someone is. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, the second one, for example, again, in the visual facilitation part, I did a workshop on uh, six thinking hats. You must be knowing about uh, the six thinking hats. And this is how you can execute this in a visual format. I, right now, I'm showing you only the examples, but then uh, uh, you have to be in the workshop to, to see how it is facilitated. This is, uh, these are some pictures of uh, those that workshop in which people are working on the, they are brainstorming using uh, the six thinking hats. And this is how the scene was. At, at the end of the workshop, they were able to harvest their ideas in a very visual format. Um, again, an example, um, when you are doing a training, then at the end of the training, you have to take a brief or you have to take a feedback from people. Now this can be done by giving this kind of a visual format, which means ask them what they were thinking of the workshop in the past, what they were thinking in the, of the workshop now, and what they will be doing with the skills they have learned in future. So this is how you can brief it. What I'm trying to explain you is that in every scenario, whether you are a scrum master or whether you are a design thinker or whether you are a trainer for, from, for, from any genre, you can use visual uh, methods and visual frameworks to execute your trainings. This was again, uh, this is again a method called zero draft. I'm just showing you examples. These are the visual formats where brain, in which brainstorming is done. And these are uh, different methods. I, I told you the six, six thinking hats, even the basics like SWOT analysis, you can, you can do SWOT analysis in a visual format. Here you can see, see a few examples like Moscow chart or Kanban chart, which is heavily used in agile and scrum methodologies. Now let's see where you can use this visual facilitation. As I told you, if you're a design thinker and if you're doing design thinking sprints, then you can use these uh, visual facilitation charts. If you're a scrum master or a trainer or a coach, when you are doing brainstorming session with your team or you're using any mental model, you are working on co-creation sessions or team meetings or even for icebreakers and energizers. You can use these kinds of, um, these kinds of facilitative charts, visual facilitative charts. Um, now, um, this I'll cover a little later. Let me introduce energizers to you. Now, as I told you, uh, icebreakers and energizers are also visual facilitation. Now, on 19th of May, we will be doing a dedicated workshop on visual energize energizers and icebreakers for online meetings. These days in Corona times, everyone is doing video calls, right? So we'll be learning how you can use energizers and uh, icebreakers to, to keep the tempo high and to to keep the creativity level high in your online meetings. So you will be getting, if you have RSVP this event, then you will be getting an email with all the information about the workshop on 19th May here on seven days to go. 
the second part we we covered the first part which was visual facilitation the second part is the sketch notes you can use sketch notes um in your business now let's see what are sketch notes sketch notes look something like this they are basically um simple forms of gra of graphics or icons or text which you use to draw stuffs uh to explain a scenario for example this was one of the meetings which i attended uh which was on the art of creating an effective marketing strategy and then we i i um i i sketch note the whole event and this was the whole summary now this you can do it in various um, scenarios if you are attending a meeting if you are in a classroom and if you are a student then instead of taking linear text notes you can take sketch notes uh, when the teacher is teaching you so this is one method in the office scenario when your boss is having a meeting instead of sending an mom like the minutes of meeting in an email you can actually do a sketch note and then send minutes of meeting here are a few more examples uh, this is the gdpr which i made gdpr sketch note which i made uh, during uh, the gdpr days uh, when it was launched so this was one example in which i explained this was actually a blog you can actually do a blog summary as well with your sketch notes this was my blog and i did a summary for my blog another example this was a meeting uh, the evp meeting the european visual practitioners meeting which uh, we did and this was not made by me but someone else but this is how she summarized the meeting so this is also an example of sketch note where you can use sketch notes as i told you when you are writing a blog then you can make a visual summary of that uh, blog or you can use it in schools and universities when you are um giving a lecture or you are taking a lecture you can use it in meetings and call summaries um in a office scenario or you can use it um, in your course notes when you are when you are learning any course from udemy or coursera.com or any online course you can take notes uh, in a sketch note format um the fourth one is a, a brilliant one where you can use website content as well to use uh, your uh, to to make your website look more charming and more attractive and you can also use sketch notes for video production you must be knowing when videos are produced you are first you first have to make storyboards to explain people uh, about the different scenes in a video you can make those stories storyboards using sketch notes as well the third use of visual thinking is visual powerpoints like for example the powerpoint which i am showing you has a lot of visuals simple doodles simple drawings can enhance your uh, uh, can enhance the level uh, to which you can explain in your uh, in your uh, powerpoints it will be easy for people to understand how you can do it is by developing your own visual vocabulary what i mean by visual vocabulary is let's say you are a digital marketer then you should be having your own visual vocabulary how to draw emails how to draw a facebook icon or how to draw facebook ads something like this or if you are a scrum master then a lot of um, uh, icons related to your scrum methodologies or if you are an innovation consultant then a lot of icons related to your uh, to innovation consulting for example here you can see a lot of id a lot of icons but these icons have to be very emotional icons and not just a typical uh, rectangular icon but add some emotion to it for example if i show you here in the middle there is something called bug fixing and i've drawn a bug and then a wrench because it's a fixing thing similarly this is uh, related to visual vocabulary in business innovation i told you if you have to draw design thinking intuitive intelligence collaboration all these things can be drawn in a metaphorical way in simple by use of simple visuals some of which we'll be practicing today now um to do this kind of workshop we have also we will be also launching a workshop soon under 7 days to go and you can attend that workshop mm. this is uh, a 21 days of business drawing which i have shown which i have already made a package and if you can email us on info@7daystogo.com i'll be providing it to you for free this is a 21 days package video video course let's see what is graphic recording the fourth part of visual thinking graphic recording looks something like this in which someone notes down or summarizes in a visual format on a big sheet of paper so he in this picture this this guy is attending a webinar uh, sorry uh, a ted talks and then he is um summarizing it in the form of 
big uh, in the form of visuals in big on a big sheet now this is probably the most difficult part of uh, visual thinking because this guy needs to have his visual vocabulary very strong and updated plus he he has also to understand the topic which this person is talking about so this this guy requires uh, hands on knowledge of both the aspects and then produce it live so this is the most difficult part of visual thinking only the experts are able to do it here is another example this lady is again doing a graphic recording on a big sheet of paper similarly this example yeah the fifth thing which you can do is give visual greetings to people at your work uh, which means simple doodles let me show you for example these um, now if somebody is uh, an out of the box thinker in your office then you can draw this and just write um you are out of the box thinker draw it on a post it or maybe an a4 sheet and then just gift it to the person and you will realize that a hand drawn visual works far better than any any uh, anything you can buy and gift to a person so try doing it and you will realize the, the the change in relationship between you and that person similarly great job done making work fun and amazing mentor uh this was one of the workshop which i did uh, in which these people uh, they, they all gifted uh, the doodles to each other and look at the smile on their faces now i have uh, made an ebook on uh, on on 11 kinds of gifts uh, visual gifts which you can give to people and i have named that book as kudos at work and this is also available for free to all those who have rsvp'd to this event if you are watching it on facebook live or any other live channel then email us on info at 7 days to go and i'll be sending you this all free give me a minute before we jump on the visual storytelling let me check because i can't uh, get the feedback so i have to check my whatsapp message to see if everything is going right okay yeah uh, ah, so now the sixth part visual storytelling in communication this is probably the, the the most closest to my heart because the topic is also visual storytelling and let me show you what is this now visual storytelling looks like this for example in this picture you can see that there is a journey which is defined now imagine that you are doing a uh, you are a project manager and then you have to explain the explain people that how will you start and how will you end now a typical project management journey you might have seen in 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 dead boxes people are showing it in boxes but now this is the way you can show it in the form of visuals in which this is a typical scenario which we all know your 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 ship started from an island and it's going to a goal now this is point a and the goal is point b and in between is your company or your project which is going through now if this project will have waves waves means threats you cannot avoid they are natural threats which will come in in, in between now there are whales which are unexpected problems and of course you will need an ex external consultant or a trainer to coach you through this problem and then this guy um, on the top is with the binoculars who sees an opportunity so you can use a lot of metaphors in your story to to, to tell people what you want to communicate in your in your project management now let me give you an example you you still remember how we uh, i showed you this slide where it said the scope of this workshop right and we 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 check this slide now imagine if i showed you this slide which still is the scope of this workshop introduction what are the usable formats if i can you make a difference between this slide and that slide now this is the power of uh, visual storytelling when i show you this slide you already know that there is a story which goes which is which is going on you know that scope of the workshop is someone who is you know uh, seeing through a height through a cave cliff and then he knows where we are going so this is the whole, this is the biggest difference between a text format presentation and a story storytelling format of presentation let us see some more examples these are again formats of storyboarding um, this was one format which uh, i did a workshop with seven days to go in which i was telling them about 10 days for a facebook ad roadmap and this was the kind of storyboard which i made to explain this uh, ex to for this workshop this is another form of a storytelling template which you can use uh, in the form of a roadmap 
this is another form where there is a where there is a tree and then you can show a lot of metaphors to define your project for example uh, here the axe is shown as unexpected problems the the water bucket is shown as uh, the opportunities the sun is basically your favorable points every business has a favorable point um, things which can go in favor of yours then there are apples there are low hanging apples there are high hanging apples and this way you can actually represent your uh, your complete project it can be a project it can be a training schedule anything you want to com communicate to people use these kind of simple story storyboards now these are only few examples but then when you attend a workshop an 8 hour detailed workshop then you will know how you can yourself imagine these um, these these storytelling metaphors and you can yourself draw these um, at the end of the workshop Again, give you an, giving you an example. Um, in when you start a workshop, you make agenda, right? Agenda for the workshop. Now, this is my way of showing an agenda. So these are people, the attendees, the, the participants, and then to reach a goal, they have to become uh, a storyboard champ. And in between the yellow ones is the course content. Then we take a break. Then again, there is course going on. Then we take a break. And then again, there is a course. So this is how you show your agenda of the day. You can already make a difference that a usual agenda of the day um, could, could be boring, but this one has a story in it because people are walking, people are going through one point to another point and reaching a goal. This is my visual resume. I've already, whenever I introduce myself, I show this visual resume. So this is what I do, the outside world and the inside world. The outside world is about digital marketing, team performance, co-creation sessions, change management, empowering people to, uh, to draw, and then empowering via, um, empowering people to use visual set work. And this is my inside space, which is I do Krav Maga. I, I love traveling, so these are mountains. I love spending time with my family giving trainings, doing acro yoga, and a bit of pole dance as well. So this was my visual resume. And you can draw your own visual resume as well. Trust me, if you're searching for a job, try doing a visual resume and you will see what difference it makes to your selection. People will give you attention and that attention might become a reason of you getting through. Try it out. So these are theme-based stories, as you can see. Now, if you are not comfortable making a theme-based story, then you can at least make these kinds of, in which make some boxes and show the information flow. As I told you, when you attend a complete workshop, then you will know what kind of information flow you have to have, you should have in what kinds of scenarios. So top down, bottom up, or diagonal, or left to right, or mandala format, which goes from center to outside. There are a lot of kinds of information flow in a, in a story in a storyboard this is another format a sun and a cloud model and in the cloud you can mention whatever you wish to so th there might be six pointers which you would like to mention in that in the storyboard this was a storyboard which i made for my workshop because in my workshop there are a lot of strangers who are coming and then i wanted to make a, a kind of a storyboard which says small talk and the art of talking to strangers so point one two three four five and this is also a kind of storyboard which you can make for your own blogs or for your own pointers one two three four pointers they are called listicles and you can now draw in the form of a storyboard so these are the usage, uh, these are the situation where you can draw storyboards. Give me 10 seconds. So visual storyboard scenarios could be when you are doing an outcome presentation. So you have done the work and you want to show your managers that this is the outcome, use a storytelling template and then show your outcome. You can also use this outcome presentation in if you are a student when you are submitting your dissertations and um, uh, dissertations and uh, the end thesis. You can use the outcome presentations. Similarly, show the meeting agenda before starting a meeting in the form of a storyboard. Show your project and process plan when you are um, when you are a project manager and you want to show to the team, the stakeholders, your project plan. Use a storytelling storyboard. I'm appearing here a little bit to tell you that uh, the, the slides are available so you can project it full screen and we all want to see it bigger. So mm -hmm. if you just switch there, we can see it all bigger. Uh, one second. In the slides, help? in Google Slides. Uh, in Google Slides, yeah. So yeah, this way. I send you the, yep. There you go. So beautiful. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Perfect. That's it. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is actually more clear. Yeah, we were here. So I was at uh, the project and process plan. So uh, if you if you are a project manager, then you can show your projects uh, in the form of uh, storytelling boards, storyboards. If you are summarizing something, so let's say you are doing a meeting or uh, you are doing a brainstorming session and you want to summarize the results, you can again use a storytelling template. If you are a public speaker and you need the background slides, use these kinds of storytelling and you will see that uh, while public speaking you already have a story to build on and this is fabulous when you are a public speaker you have a story already at your background which is which is hand drawn when you are doing a general presentation like what i am doing right now you can again use a storytelling board um, and and simple graphics to represent uh, what you are trying to say uh, learning graph when you are a trainer and you want to show people that you will be learning and from A to B, you will be learning these things. You will be going through one to B, A to B. You use uh, a storyboard again. Problem solving, problem solution charts. We'll be try, we'll be drawing um, one problem solution chart today, and I'll be showing you what it is. So you have problems and then you have a solution. How will you represent it in the form of story? And your sales pitch, if you are a sales manager uh, and you are giving a sales pitch to your uh, to your clients, this is a fabulous way to show your uh, to give your sales pitch. You will instantly catch attention of your of your of your client. So now, as I told you, we will also be doing a three day workshop online workshop um, for st visual storytelling. And um, if you can email us and if you're interested, you can email us and we'll, we'll be sending you more information. Usually this kind of workshop is seven hours in a physical format. Uh, but this time we'll be doing in an online format in which this will go for three days, two hours each day. And we'll be sending you more information if you can email us. What will you be cover in uh, in those three days? So first will be visual mastery. You will be learning all the basic elements of uh, visual drawing so that you have that strength to draw anything which you which you, which you are visualizing in your brain. So we'll be telling you what are the pens and markers you should use, how to draw headers in your page, how to use how to draw objects and icons, coloring options, the coloring palette, people, how to draw people, and um, and postures, some of which we'll, we'll be drawing today as well. Uh, a bit of uh, process, how to draw processes, uh, because a lot of at work, you will you are working with processes. So we'll be seeing how you can draw processes Use, using metaphors, speech bubbles, text, different kinds of text formats, typography, effects to enhance your drawings, and hierarchy, the visual hierarchy, so that people can easily read through your, read through your visual stories, either top to bottom or bottom to top or left to right. After which we will be learning about the storyboards and I'll be telling you what are storyboards, what is the methodology to ideate a storyboard so that you can ideate the storyboard by yourself and you don't need a template then. So the, this is a specific methodology which I have developed, which I'll be sharing with you then. The formats and use cases, we'll be seeing some easy formats which you, which you can already draw and I'll be sharing a lot of templates with you in that workshop. And then the final will be, you will be making your own storyboard um, and your confidence will be very high after you do this. So this is the whole package of that workshop. Email us, I already showed you the email, info at seven days to go, and we'll be sending you the information. During that workshop, you will be also given these two practice booklets. The first one is for the visual mastery in which there are a lot of practice pages to for you to draw doodles. And, and the visual vocabulary. And the second one is, has the second one has a lot of templates on the storyboards and you'll be able to practice those storyboards during the workshop and after the workshop as well. Yeah, so do not forget to email us, info at seven days to go.com. Now, very quickly, we will see why this is important, why we are paying so much attention to visual uh, visuals, because the, 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 the research says that when, when you hear something, you only remember 10% of it. When you read something, you remember 20% of it. But when you see something and when you associate it with an action, you remember 80% of it. So 
that's why sketch note was such an important tool because you are learning and you are drawing as well you are your hands are in action and that's why you will remember it more when you draw and visualize the second point eyes as a as a sensory organ we have five sensory organs eyes consume most amount of blood and energy and that's why eyes are so close to our brain probably what nose is to dogs eyes is to humans humans are visual animals and 75% of the energy is consumed by eyes in our brain these are other um, other uh, use other um, other usage of um, um, of visuals this is how visuals will uh, ease your life and this was drawn by william in bram she is a fabulous um, uh, visual thinker and and she sh she shows that your communication will be faster uh, if you draw visuals you can easily summarize things you will be to the point when uh, you are drawing stuff when you are and you can build together so collaboration is easy when these things are visual you will be considered approachable and this is my favorite point uh, whenever you draw these easy doodles people will think you are approachable they will not build a barrier between you the message will be received clearly you will be able to simplify things easily uh, what you cannot say in words you will be able to speak in visuals and see the icon which i have used for simplifying uh, the energy level will be high during the workshop or during the meeting you will have more involved presentations and it will expand your creativity and creative teams are more efficient teams in any work environment how can you let's see the how of it how can you train your brain to to be more receptive of, about visual learnings the biggest point is that you do not need to be picasso or leonardo this is not a fine art lesson this is just basic drawings and i will show you how you can draw this this figure so easily you just need to need just need to have some techniques and you don't need to be an artist somebody needs to tell you the basic techniques and you will be through the second is drawing is an instinct in you as humans drawing is an instinct as strong as sex so if you can have sex you can draw you can draw as well and now basic drawing is basic human instinct and it has nothing to do with fine art so remove that barrier from your mind and if you think my drawings are better then trust me i have practiced it it just needs practice it doesn't need a latent talent so what i'm trying to say is it doesn't need a latent talent it just needs some practice and after this practice you will be through uh, and you will be good with these drawings so just practice and practice will uh, be good enough uh, an exercise for you to to draw in any scenario yeah so um, let me see if you have some questions uh, in the chat i will be removing this slide now from here and then i will be using my ipad now and then um, we'll be drawing few things but before that let me take some questions so i can use this drawing exercise as per your comfort level maria what do you think mm -hmm. let me come back to this um, after the drawing so hey. yes now i'm here <laughs> i was like knock 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 <laughs> so there's a lot of interaction today, today, and I think that everybody is looking forward to the practice, but it's good that you mentioned that what if I'm not a good drawer, you know, that you make it approachable. Because as I was also saying before, like part of the success of this explainer video is that the way that they are drawn is not necessarily 100% professional. It's more about the visual communication, right? Absolutely. So you don't have to be a professional artist. You can just do like, you know, some circles with some sticks, like you see some basic things and, and do it, right? Yeah. And I'll be teaching you how to draw these kind of human figures in a in a very very simple way, and you will be able to draw it. You will you will be surprised by yourself. I would like to know also quickly which one because you rec yeah you can use this and implement it for everything. You know, you said like meeting summaries, like pitching your business. In this case, that you know we have an entrepreneurial community. What do you think that is the best exercise that we can do now? Of course, we can. Of course, we invited several times to people to our amazing workshop where we have the whole thing. But just to do a little demo. What what is going to be the practice of today? Absolutely. So you can keep uh, my slide away now, uh, mm -hmm. so that you just remove my slides, and then I'll be showing you on my iPad. Do we have some questions uh, till now? Mm, I'm checking here. Mostly was before about the full screen because it's so beautiful. Guys, if you just uh, came to the event and you haven't RSVP, 
please make sure that we have your email, send it to us, you know, by private message or via comments or as you wish. So we can send you all the slides, you know, because there was a lot of really rich content there. So make sure that you share uh, that one so you can get the slides and you can also get the video of this presentation. You have something really actionable to take with you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, somebody's asking, how do we share the visuals? Uh, you know, if you work in your iPad, how do you normally suggest that people do it? Should you print it or just send it in an email? How to yeah. distribute that content? <laughs> yeah, important, very important question. So there are two methods. One is if you don't have an iPad, don't worry. Just use a pen and a paper. So uh, let me show you two, uh, right away. We go old school. I have, I got it. <laughs> We just yeah, go pen and paper. <laughs> I used to do it this way when uh, I would draw and. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> okay. So for example, these are my uh, drawings. These are on pen and paper. And then um, you can uh, just take a picture and uh, there's an app on Android and uh, an iPhone called Cam Scanner. Just take a picture and then the Cam Scanner will um, convert it into a very nice digital format. And email yourself. You also need a little bit of Photoshop skills because uh, it might have some errors. So uh, when, when you take a picture from Cam Scanner and then put it on your Photoshop and then clear those images. So these, I used to do it uh, this way earlier, uh, but uh, now I use the iPad. So for iPad, uh, for iPad, you can directly draw on the iPad and then email uh, the image to yourself. That's it. Mm -hmm. What I'll be doing is I'll be showing you some drawings on the iPad now. Can you see my okay. iPad? Now let's let let's reply to the last questions here, and then we can get started. If there are many questions or more things coming up, please leave it in comments. We promise that we're going to cover up everything. So, quick question from Tanya: Which app do you use in your iPad? Do you just draw directly in the iPad, or do you have a software and application for that? Yeah, I use uh, the the uh, the by default app, which is the Notes. So the notes is uh, good enough an app, but if you are a graphic designer, then you can uh, you can buy uh, Procreate. But uh, trust me, I, I have heard about uh, Procreate a lot. I have my Procreate as well, but to draw these kind of figures, you don't need Procreate. Uh, you can just draw in a simple notepad. iPad already has these kind of features. Okay. And the last question before we start, which platform do you use to draw physical paper? Informatics, well, basically that's the tablet. And in the second case, which program? So here we go. We're covering everything. We're set. <laughs> no more no. questions. Let's get started. Everybody, cool. please, so, uh, um, please, I'm inviting everybody to post the, their drawings in comments. It's going to be fun to see what everybody did. Yes. yes. So what we will do is we will try to see because um, let's let's try to draw people. The, there are many elements, there are many aspects of drawing, which I showed you in my presentation, but then people is the most important part, right? Because businesses are made out of people for people. So let's see how we can draw people and in different scenarios, how you can use that people doodle to define different scenarios in business. So people to draw a person, there are four parts of a person. The first one is, let me change the ink. I'm changing it to black. So the first part is, an oval, which is basically the, because I'm not able to see, so I should, I will draw a little thicker. So this is the face of that guy. The second part is the torso of that guy and always draw a torso like this. So a torso would be here like this. And then the legs and the hands. Now understand that your legs should always start from the waist. And you should not start your legs from in between. If you draw this, it will always become a lady because then this will look like a skirt. So always draw your legs from the end points. And now hands, your hands should always start from the neck because usually your hands start from the neck, right? So here it starts and then there's an elbow and then it goes here. Similarly, it starts from here and then there is an elbow and then it goes here. So this is a guy who is something who is doing something like this, right? Now, two, three do's and don'ts, which you should not do is, I told you uh, already that do not draw the legs from in between. Second is when you're drawing a human being, then do not draw, do not draw hands from the stomach. 
many people try to do this but do not dry, draw from the stomach so this is also not right uh, two more stuffs when you are drawing hairs uh, for this person try not to draw hairs from touching like this otherwise it will always become a flower try to give some gap so keep it in the air yeah so this is the hair and now about the eyes and the and the expressions always use a finer tip uh, in comparison to what you have drawn use a finer tip to draw the eyes so here i am drawing eyes eyes are nothing but two let me use a th thicker one because you can't see so eyes are nothing but two um, two lines and then i smile try it uh, i request you to try again let me show you once more how i did it and um, i'm clearing it so i told you just draw an oval let me change my so try try to draw an oval then a torso and then legs and then hands and give it a smile yeah everyone is cool maria you can draw this as well <laughs> i think you are able to so this is how you can draw uh, a simple doodle figure now let's see what you can do in a business scenario now uh, in a business scenario, let's say you are a team which is going forward to achieve a goal. Let's see how we can draw this. So I already told you um, how to draw a person. So let's see how, first of all, let me tell you how to draw a team. So a team can be drawn like this, an oval, a torso, an oval, a torso, and again an oval and a torso, and then make a circle because teams are always together. So this is a team. A basic team and now if this team is excited enough then you can draw something like this where everyone is taking their hands above and then give some special effects in the hand so this is a team which is very excited and of course they are able to see them see each other and smile so this is a team now if i if you have to make a team which is trying to achieve a goal then you can show it like this when you are excited about something and you want to go ahead to do something, your torso is a little forward bent. So try to draw this and then one person. Again, this and one person. And now this can become your arrow. Uh, I'm deleting it and again making it straight and then this is the center point yeah and these are the people who are saying wow we will do it yes this is fabulous and this is the road to your goal and now if you change your ink a little bit then here you can draw a bit of goal yeah and if you have uh, an highlighter right now with you then it's always good that you give some shades um, so i'm using a highlighter function of this and going in black and putting it in a very gray mode and i will be drawing something like this too too much um thin one So this is basically the shadow which you are drawing. Always draw the shadow on the inside part when there is uh, when there is a curved body, and on the outside part when there is a non-curved body. When you are drawing shadow, always imagine that the light is coming from this end. So this is a way in which you can show uh, a project going ahead. And if you want to draw, if you want to make a storyboard uh, out of it, as I told you, then you can divide this line into A, B, C, A, B, C, D. And maybe then you can write here, put some post-its here to define the A phase of the project, put some post-its here to define the B phase of this project and C phase and D phase. So this almost becomes like your 
project plan. So this can be one of the storyboard. I am writing here. Project plan. Yeah, good. Let's see some more uh, expressions uh, which you can draw from. Uh, which you can draw from uh, uh, the simple the simple uh, human human doodle so let's say if you are drawing this guy and this guy and they are both towards each other now they are independent right now there is not nothing they are doing now let's say they are looking at each other yeah and um, to give a feel of um, let's say this is a mentor relationship now, to draw a mentor, mentor means one person knows a certain things and other one is a receiver. So this guy puts his hand here in the shoulder. And then to show a leadership position, you always draw hands in your waist. So this guy is almost like a leader holding him. And this guy is a receiver. To give it more effect, you can add uh, a bubble, for example. Here is a bubble. And because he's a mentor and he's a listener, you can draw a bubble inside this bubble. Now this shows that whatever he is saying, he's understanding. So this could be one of your, you can draw this and say mentor. You can also give this guy some hairs and maybe, and, and wait. So most of the time the interns need mentorship, right? So how to draw an intern? A simple method to draw an intern is to draw like this. And that's so the he wears a cap. So this becomes like a cap. And this guy is the mentor. And this becomes a mentor relationship. Right. So this was one way. So the second way uh, in a business scenario is uh, decision making. Many a times you are not sure uh, what decision you can take. So for this, draw a guy here. And again, this torso. And this time he is holding two plates so one is a and one is b and now he's not sure which decision to take and you can change the expressions to sad expressions and show that he is not able to take a decision yeah let me show you one more stuff um how to draw a customer you have always heard customer is king right now let's see how you can draw a customer so draw an oval this is the face of the customer he is smiling and now because he is king give him this crown so this is customer and now draw a torso and because customer is always confident he is in charge of the situation so give his hand on the waist and this becomes a customer and to make it more beautiful give red color to his crown so this way he becomes a customer now if you have to make one more story uh let me save it so let's say if you are delivering a service or a product to a customer how will you draw so we will use all the two drawings which we have drawn we will draw a team and then we will draw a customer and we will show him that a project or a, or a product or a service delivery is being given so how will you draw draw a team let me change it to black So let's say this was a team. Who was your service team? We already know how to draw a team. Now let's say this was your IT team. This is your IT team. And now here is your uh, customer. right now here you are giving him a de delivery now a service delivery is in the form of now you have to metaphorize and draw a service delivery let me give some color to his crown here i'm using a, um, an assembly line to show that the delivery is being done this assembly line could be this an assembly line looks like this right 
and whenever you are showing a delivery of a, a, pro a product or a service, always draw it in the form of a gift. So this is how the visual thinkers mostly show, pro show uh, their products uh, or a service because it's in the form of gift and you are giving a gift to your customer. Now uh, you can play around uh, in this picture. So if I delete his hands and I want to make it like he is uh, receiving the gift, so I can draw like this. So here, uh, so he is basically trying to receive and here I forgot to draw the eyes. I will use a thin pointer. Again, I'm changing my brush and here they are very excited to give the service. They're very excited to give the service and this guy is receiving. So this becomes a scenario in which you are doing a product delivery. Yeah. So this was a simple scenario in which you learn how to draw the basic human figures and now you can draw a complete scene out of it product delivery let me quickly show you one energizer as, as well because i promised you i will show you show you an energizer so here it is um, for the energizer you have to use the whiteboard functionality of zoom call or webex call or uh, or your microsoft teams and if you are a host and you are doing a, and you are doing a, a whiteboard uh, you are using the whiteboard of zoom then what you should do Make a, make a chart like this. Is it shining? It is shining. Yeah? Make a chart like this and then divide it in, in nine columns. I mean, uh, nine boxes, three by three. This is better. So divide it in uh, three by three. So this becomes your column. Now, what you have to do, uh, draw something uh, in the first uh, first box. So I'm drawing a hat here. I'm drawing a hat, uh, for example, like this. Right, this is a hat. And now here I'm drawing, uh, let's say a lamp. So a lamp looks like this. Yeah, and now what the other people have to do, so let's say there are one, two, three, four, five, six, we will use this one as an example, but let's say you have six people, what you will do is use the annotation uh, functionality of your Zoom call and everyone can draw on the same page now, on the same whiteboard. So you will give the first person this box, the second person this box, third this one, fourth, five, six, and then what they have to do is, you, you show them an example that you have to combine a hat and a lamp and come up with something new, a new product. So this, this is basically new product. And this new product could be now one, and you have to make an innovative product. What I can think of is, let's say if, if the lamp is same and I, I use the hat part of this, the hat as it's, uh, as at the top part. So this becomes like a hat, a hat lamp. And this is my new product. <laughs> Similarly, people have to draw other products as well using hat and lamp. Explore your creativity and this way, yeah, this will work as an energizer and an icebreaker in your team meetings. Yeah, so today you learned how to draw a simple person, different business scenarios out of that person. And now you have learned an icebreaker which you can use with your team. This is the power of visuals. Try it and share your pictures in the chat comments and use it with your team. Maria, I'm done. What do you think? <laughs> this is what I think. <laughs> I did the first one. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, nice. But you did look. it very nicely. Yeah. I yeah, look at, the, look at the hairs. I tried, I wanted to do it more like mine, but okay. This. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. I would love do you to like see it then? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I did this and I was trying to do that, but the lamp was a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks yeah. like a mushroom. But you can yeah. draw anything here. You can just see uh, uh, some objects around you, R random objects. I can see some wine bottles behind you. Yes, maybe that's what you. I need. Some bottles behind. Yeah. <laughs> so what is in front of me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it was really, really fun. Really useful as well. Easy to implement. Right now we're exposed to so much content, so many texts, you know, so like just to communicate in this way or to learn how to do that within Teams is amazing, you know? And I think that that's a great thing of what we're going to do next also, because apart from the workshop, we're going to host an event on the 19th as well. That is going to be more in-depth workshop on this topic. So we are also going to leave in comments um, yeah, the, how you can sign up for this one, because we want to have a group that is ready to draw and to learn how to yeah. improve those skills, right? So yeah, ice breaking and the energizer yeah. skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's basically it. Like to invite everybody, to thank everybody. As soon as we stop the live stream, everybody will be able to to post the, the photos, you know, of everything that we have drawn or, you know, like the JPEG out of your like iPad or whatever. I'm really curious about what people have done during this time. It was really fun. Thank you for that. Thank you for My that, Piers. And yeah, I, I know this is just the beginning. So for everybody who's interested in the workshop, please just send us an email to info at seven days to go.com and just join to the workshop, you know, like to the, the just the, the single workshop that we have on the 19th. Yeah. Maybe we can put the slides for that one as well so you can see what is coming up next. Yeah, so if you just share the slides, I, I can tell you a little bit more about this event and also the next things that we have coming up, uh, yeah, with our experts at seven days to go. Yeah. So, so this is it. Let me see. Right now it's loading, loading. Anyway, guys, you know that uh, this is just a continuation of what we're doing with the POS. We also have one-on-one -on -one, uh, 15 minutes call. So you can ask anything, so you can improve your skills, you know, so that's also 100% free. You can just do it there, you know, for the workshop or for the in-depth workshop, we have a, a prize. Let's check it out. It's a really special prize, really accessible right now, and it's way it's going to be way more in-depth. Yeah, so I, I just invite you for that one um, for our upcoming events. You will get everything through the slides. Uh, let me see what else can I tell you apart from... Thank you, Piers. I wanted to just show the slides, but it's something happened in the loading the slides process. You can pull my picture. <laughs> well, we have, because I have it right here. What we have, as I said, is every Monday we're drinking coffee, okay? So even if you're not a coffee drinker, you just want to drink tea, okay? Just bring your favorite cup. What are you drinking today? Just like that. And uh, join us to talk about the future of entrepreneurship on uh, next Monday. We're going to have uh, Christian there, May 18th. Uh, it's always at 5 p.m. Netherlands time, you know, here in, in uh, Latin America, it's going to happen at at our 10 a.m. So it's just half an hour, quick coffee break, you know, to talk about something useful. We're going to be talking about the future of entrepreneurship, you know, based on what's happening right now and also in history. You know, it's going to be an inter interesting topic about the whole uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. And then we are going to have our next event. We're hosting two events per month in Spanish. This one is going to be about how to prepare your pitch deck and extract, you know, like do the whole elevator pitch. I really recommend for people who are going to do this, <laughs> like first go to a where, like workshop with the POS because just to, you will get a lot of clarity by putting your business in drawings. So, you know, because always people are really like, oh my God, the presentation on how to make it really beautiful. And you know, you many people hire a designer. What about going simple? What about using visuals? And then, you know, just getting the concepts that we're going to get from Viviana on how to improve our pitch, our business pitch, you know, and attract even better like partners, investors and everything. And afterwards, we're going to have an expert demo. So it's really similar to what just happened now with POS, like the experts is sharing the screen or showing how something is done. In this time, like we're going, yeah, we invited to Sushil and he's going to only focus on sales. You know, many people say marketeers, we both are marketeers. What about sales? What about conversions? Yeah, so we're going to show you 
how to improve your sales process using hotspots. A lot of people are using hotspots here in the free version. We're going to show you how to do this properly. And you know, also the logic behind it before you're just working on the, you know, in the, in the software. So you have like the different, how to manage the pipeline, how to define your buyer persona, all of these things. And how is this going to land really nicely in a way you can centralize your teams and have team alignment because you know, marketing sales, customer service or customer support, everything is one company and something that I really really liked about the drawing today was exactly that you know the team visual <laughs> we're in this together and we need to be in line so i think it's really important that we know how to put everybody on the same page and today's you know today's event had the intention of giving you those tools to start thinking in a way that sticks like that in your mind yeah so that that's everything we can go to the slide of the workshop just to give a little reminder of the workshop yep so these visual breakers and energizers for remote teams, we're really focusing on remote work right now. You know, here's the link. Also, we share the link via comments and we just wait for you. This is going to happen on May 19th as well. So just click on the link and see you there. That's everything. Yeah. Thank yeah. you PS, for everything. Thank you everybody. Stay tuned. We're going to be hosting really nice events and great content. Thanks to our experts. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. Now. Have a nice evening, everybody. Nice day. Do it, do it. Do it. Ciao. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. We are done with the webinar. Boom. I did everything <laughs> blindly. Bye -bye the webinar. Boom. <laughs> everything was blindly. I didn't see anything like any yeah, of I you. Your life still. <laughs> oh. <laughs>